At around 2.5 million kilometers squared, the Mediterranean is the ninth largest sea on Earth. As large as this sounds, it only accounts for around 0.7% of global ocean surface. If it wasn't for this 14 km wide strait connecting to the Atlantic, it would be completely enclosed by land. The sea is of immense historic and current importance, not only due to its size, but also because of its location. To the east lies West Asia, to the south is Africa, to the north is continental Europe, and to the west is the Atlantic Ocean, as previously mentioned. Some 23 countries found across three continents border the Mediterranean Sea, with a combined population of around 570 million. It's an essential body of water for connecting these regions and its people. It also connects the Suez Canal with the Atlantic, making it one of the most important shipping routes on Earth. But what if the sea disappeared and was replaced with land? How would it affect the planet and which countries would be the most hindered? Let's find out. Now before we dive into the details, let's travel back nearly 6 million years to experience the Messinian Salinity Crisis. This crisis nearly spelled the end of the Mediterranean Sea, when tectonic movements caused the Strait of Gibraltar to close, cutting off the Mediterranean from the Atlantic. Over time, evaporation outpaced the inflow of water, causing up to 80% of the sea to dry up. This is what Europe looked like during that time. However, thanks to the Zanklian Flood, tectonic activity reversed the blockage, allowing the Atlantic to flow back into the Mediterranean, essentially saving its life. But what if theoretically an event like the Messinian Salinity Crisis were to occur again, but this time see 100% of the sea disappear? Well, this is how the region might look. This is of course just one hypothetical scenario and just for fun. So there have now been some astronomical changes to many countries that previously had coast along the Med. Some countries are happier than others with these changes. Now, one standout country that is completely unrecognisable from how it currently looks is Italy. Its famous boot-shaped country is now just a big old blob in the middle of this newly formed region. A country which used to have a significant presence in the sea has now became much larger but massively landlocked. It used to have the highest exclusive economic zone claim out of all 23 countries with some 542,000 kilometers squared, due to it having so much coastline and large islands within the sea. But in this new world, it has zero kilometers squared. Although the country has grown substantially in size, its lack of ocean access would likely hugely hinder its economy. Luckily, it only needs to travel through one fellow Schengen country to reach the Atlantic. Now, even though Portugal has Mediterranean vibes to it, it's not classed as a Mediterranean country, as quite simply, it doesn't have any coastline along the Med. The country only has coastline along the Atlantic, meaning in this new world, it wouldn't physically change whatsoever. But as other countries like, say, Italy have now become landlocked, they may depend on countries like Portugal, Spain, France, or even Morocco to use their ports to ship into the Atlantic giving some economic boost to the Iberian countries. Another country whose shape has drastically changed is Greece. Greece is actually the country with the most coastline along the Mediterranean. This is due to the fact that it comprises of so many islands, islets and jagged coast. In total, it has around 13,000 kilometers of Mediterranean coastline. Similar to Italy, it has now become completely landlocked, which would cause havoc to its economy, so much so that it would likely collapse. The Black Sea once reached the Atlantic Ocean through the Bosphorus Strait, which connected to the Sea of Marmara, which then flowed into the Dardanelles Strait before eventually reaching the Aegean Sea, which finally connected to the Mediterranean and therefore the Atlantic, a very long-winded route. However, with the Med no longer existing, this has turned the Black Sea into an inland body of water, or otherwise known, a landlocked sea. Countries as far as Georgia would see economic downfall as a result. This would in fact make the country now landlocked, as the Black Sea is no longer connected to the Atlantic. Now, one country which would lose some geopolitical power, which you mightn't expect, is the UK. But how exactly? Well, this is due to the country kind of losing one of its key strategic territories, Gibraltar. Gibraltar's location makes it a critical naval and trade choke point between the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. Without the Med, it's now just a tiny bit of landlocked land. It's not just the European countries that are severely affected, just look at North Africa. 
Tunisia, which used to enjoy 1200 kilometers of Mediterranean coastline, has now became landlocked and completely dwarfed by its fellow North African neighbors. Algeria and Libya are already huge as it is, ranking as the world's current 10th and 16th largest countries. With the removal of the Mediterranean, their land sizes have both grown significantly. As much as a good thing gaining land is, just like Tunisia, they've also now became landlocked. Apart from losing its very influential Suez Canal, Egypt isn't too upset about our new world, as it's gained land but still has access to the world's oceans via the Red Sea. It's kind of gained power in the fact that many of its competing neighbours are now landlocked, meaning they may rely on Egypt in order to access its ports and the oceans. The Egyptians can now also reach Turkey and Europe slash the EU via land without having to travel through very unstable regions of the Middle East. So currently there are two countries in the world which are classed as doubly landlocked countries being Liechtenstein and Uzbekistan. These are countries that are landlocked only by other countries who are also landlocked. There are no countries that are triply landlocked, but if we replace the med with land we could see potentially a few. It's hard to give a confident estimate, but many countries found in the Balkans, depending on who gets what land, could in fact become triply landlocked. Now, when you think of Mediterranean countries, I bet most people would never immediately think of Syria and Lebanon. They seem more geographically and politically tied to the Middle East. But in fact, both of these countries do have coastline along the Med, making them absolutely Mediterranean countries. But in our new world, they've lost their ocean access, making them both landlocked. They have in fact now both connected to Cyprus, a country which is completely devastated with this change. Cyprus once enjoyed its island status in a beautiful part of the world. However, it's now connected to Turkey, Egypt and Syria, making land invasion via Africa, Europe or Asia now completely possible. Due to its lack of sea, its tourism economy collapses. So countries found far away wouldn't be too impacted by the loss of this great sea. Or would they? Well, pretty much every country on Earth would be affected, especially China and the US. But why? Well, as mentioned earlier, the Suez Canal no longer connects the Eastern world with the West. It means ships now have to navigate a much longer and more dangerous route south of the African continent. This would cause mass inflation around the world due to some 10% of global trade passing through the canal yearly. So there we have it, in this completely hypothetical scenario, there are some of the winners and losers. Like and subscribe for more geography content, and as always, thanks for watching.